What to do, YouTube? This is Acid Roots. So I'm going to review Weezer's The Red Album from 2008. Now, basically, this came out a couple years after Weezer's Make Believe album from 2005. And I reviewed that album back in October, and I wanted to see kind of what was next for Weezer, just because I remember the hit potential of a couple of their singles, like Beverly Hills and Perfect Situation, which both were really got Weezer some attention back 2005, 2006. But I don't remember what became of them after that, and it just seemed like they didn't have... At least on the rock charts, it didn't seem like they had a hit as large as Beverly Hills, so I wonder what happened to them. As I look after it, this is kind of something similar that happened to like Panic at the Disco, where like Panic at the Disco had hit songs like uh, I Write Sins, Not Tragedies, and the only difference between martyrdom and suicide is press coverage, but their 2008 album, well, it was good. It just didn't have the sheer velocity of like, a uh, fever you can't sweat out. Coldplay is another type group that was there in 2005 and came back in 2008, but they did a little bit better. Two Coldplay really ran 2008, but I wanted to see what happened with Weezer just because I don't really know. That's a big question mark for me. I didn't hear the rock radio at that time, so I don't really know. There's a couple of good singles on here like Pork and Beans and Troublemaker, which both did pretty well, but it's just different. Like I felt like Weezer's Make Believe from 2005 was kind of like a gateway album for getting into punk music and like rock music in some ways. It, this was a very entry kind of similar to Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park where Limp Biscuit and Linkin Park kind of bridged the gap between rap music and rock music and new metal and that type stuff. I felt like at least on Make Believe, Weezer was kind of a gateway project for like pop rock and kind of power pop and punk music in light cases. It did have a light punk tinge that this album doesn't have. And I noticed, I was picking up on it, I thought, hey, maybe we could get a few more songs like Beverly Hills and Perfect Situation, and maybe this is such a pity. That kind of would showcase like another punk edge, but you can tell right by the album cover that that's not really the direction they go in. And I kind of feel like this time, it's kind of more of an edgy kind of karaoke kind of like like a uh, saloon type i mean you can just kind of tell that it's not necessarily country rock but it is kind of more like of like bar hopping kind of music something where there's going to be like more drinks and kind of like karaoke type stuff just a little bit more uh yeah, I can't even think of the word for it. I want to—I don't want to say Southern Fried entirely, but it, it may just be Southern Fried. It just kind of has like more of like, kind of like a kind of hard rock edge that the last one didn't have. It's just different from Make Believe. And it's different from Make Believe, and I would have to say I'm not entirely used to like rock bands switching up the flow that conventionally that often. Like you look after like Limp Bizkit kind of did that sort of stuff. Linkin Park went from new metal to electronic and that type of stuff but it feels like sometimes this sort of stuff i just wonder what's going to happen with some more weezer albums when i get to them but it was a drastic difference from the kind of power pop and kind of mild punk rock that make believe had and i do feel like the singles are good i mean i like them i do like this kind of karaoke rock type feel and some of this i don't like all the singles kind of typical of what happened last time i don't like all the singles on here i feel like specifically pork and beans i like what they're aiming for with that that was a real kind of melded hit that i felt like could have had more potential with songs like it but they just didn't do enough songs like it but that one's definitely kind of like actually a club rock song i actually was surprised at that being kind of like a kind of like Beck's Loser or something like that. Just kind of a janky, kind of off-the-wall, kind of um, like distorted kind of pop rock and club rock kind of song, a, a rock song made for like cl dance clubs and that type of stuff. It's just interesting to kind of get that. But I'll go ahead and just break out into the singles so we can get into the meat of this album, and then I'll just kind of talk about it from there. So, um, yeah, like I was saying, the first single is Pork and Beans, and this one... Like, this being the lead single and stuff, this is kind of the showcase of what the album was supposed to represent because it came out before the album came out. So it was kind of like Beverly Hills was back in 2005 where it was kind of like the breadwinner that was going to be the selling point. And it does a pretty well, it does a pretty good job of selling the album. I definitely feel like, I really like the beat on here. I really like the instrumentation. It just kind of gives off this really kind of off the wall and kind of, uh, it's not like a typical rock production. It barely feels like a rock song entirely, but it just kind of has like, a, like if you've heard like Beck's album with the with the song Loser on there, I think that one's called, I don't remember what that one's called. It's like 
his 1994 album with Loser on there. It's just kind of got that kind of like uh, not, this. I would almost say country rock, but it's just kind of more backyard rock music. This kind of rural, rural sounding rock music in there, very similar to Beck's Loser and that type of stuff. It's kind of a country rock, karaoke rock type song, perfect for karaoke and stuff. But it's just a great club song as well. I just feel like it's kind of left field and it works. Not as unlike a lot of songs I've really heard, but it wins originality points. Maybe not quite as hit ready and quite as recitable as like Beverly Hills, but it is a quality hit that wins a lot of originality points. So I do like that one, especially it being kind of a club song in that sort of sense, just kind of a, a different one. Now the second single, The Greatest Man That Ever Lived, variations on a shaker hymn, even down to the song title, I didn't thoroughly enjoy that one. I felt like Greatest Man That Ever Lived was just trying too many things in there i couldn't really connect with that one just because it was trying it was it's kind of like what with queen did with like bohemian rhapsody and stuff where it just has a bunch of instruments in there and a bunch of different things and it just didn't stick to one particular formula it's just a pretty bewildering and kind of varietized song that's just different from like the singles i think it might have been a little bit too flamboyant for its own good but i did like there are other singles on this project I like that one is just a very kind of wild card of a song so this is kind of the thing uh dreaming was the third single this one's kind of just like more teenage rock type stuff a little bit more this kind of this this feels like a real summer rock this is something you'd listen to all summer when getting out of school or something like that for like students and that sort of thing I just kind of feel like this is the sort of song that this was played all on the radio all summer uh this was a little bit too fantasized i just kind of feel like the concept of dream in uh, this feels a little bit too i don't want to say too youthful but this kind of more like this kind of a little bit premature i guess would kind of be the concept behind it i felt like dreaming was kind of a lengthier song that this was a little bit too hazy and this kind of felt a little bit too sprawling i mean i just feel like the packaging of pork and beans and trouble i feel like the packaging of pork and beans and troublemaker were just more distinct and had a little bit more snappy kind of bite than dreaming dream was a little bit dreaming was a little bit more sprawling troublemaker is the fourth single and this is a nice one this one really feels like a karaoke song this one has the most hard rock tinge to it and this is like just like pork and beans these are both great these are both great club oriented type records and really great for stepping out and having a more exuberant time but it's just it, it i will admit that weezer has more energy on the red album than they had on I will admit that Weezer had more energy on the Red Album than they had on Make Believe. It just feels like a lot of these have more of like a stepping out and kind of take your shirt off kind of vibe about it. It's just a lot more ferocious energy and a little bit more kind of less. I mean, I, I remember Make Believe being a little bit more homely and kind of a little bit more prim and proper and kempt and that sort of stuff and put together. But they're at least kind of shedding some of that. And it, it is still kind of tame compared to like other metal bands like Godsmack or Limp Biscuit or something like that or Corn, but it is definitely they do have an edge. I like their kind of mild attitude on Pork and Beans and Troublemaker where they're kind of trying to be the bad boy. I mean apparently Wikipedia and other places say that Weezer is kind of geek rock and they're kind of like, you know, this kind of more milk toast kind of music in a sense, but I do feel like I like the fact that they're at least conveying attitude, that they're kind of like, I don't give a damn this time. So they're at least not being like the the standard typical milk toast that they might have been in the past. I, I can't confirm wholesomely that they're like milk toast. I mean, at least I saw on uh, Make Believe that they were at least somewhat prim and proper, but I'm glad that they're kind of shedding that and kind of being a little bit of ass clowns this time around just to kind of say, hey, I don't give a damn, you know, in that sense. They may not give a fuck. They may still give a fuck, but at least they don't give a damn in that sort of sense. So it's just kind of, it's good to get that and them shedding some of their shell a little bit on this album and that sort of thing. It's just interesting to kind of get that, but so... To talk about this whole album, I reviewed the deluxe edition, at least the one with 14 songs. I'm just going to say that I'm probably just going to score the regular edition because all four of the deluxe edition songs I didn't like. I'm just going to go ahead and list the five songs and then we'll get into the review. The five songs that I recommend to you out of 10 or 14 would be Pork and Beans, Everybody Get Dangerous, Thought I Knew, Troublemaker, and Automatic. 
So yeah, just to basically talk about some of the songs I didn't enjoy. I feel like all four of the deluxe edition songs, Miss Sweeney, Pig, The Spider, and The King are all a bunch of down tempo, kind of real hazy, kind of just feel like really kind of grim and just this kind of like distorted kind of opiate kind of infested kind of songs just in that sense they just sound really hazy and just kind of have a malaise to them that this is it's hard to kind of have that kind of energy it just really feels like they're kind of in a stupor almost that this is not very attractive and it's the same thing with the angel and the one and i want to say that there's at least another song like that heart songs that are just kind of like that i mean it's just a real kind of like malaise infested kind of haze about this album that just is not is not really covered well it just feels like a lot of laziness and kind of the songwriting and that type of stuff i do like what they were doing on troublemaker and pork and beans and everybody get dangerous and some of those type of songs but it just feels like over half the album just kind of has like this sort of i don't know if they do drugs if that's kind of the case but it just is surprising that they have this kind of haziness kind of like malaise about themselves when the songwriting is just pretty poor and it is really detracts like if i were to score this album out of 14 songs me only liking five out of 14 i would probably give it like you know probably like a two and a half or a three out of ten but i'm gonna up the score just because you don't have to get the deluxe edition and this is kind of extra there i mean most of the time i'll like at least one or two songs out of four or five bonus songs that are on there but i didn't like any of those i don't want to snap away the score from them when this is actually a pretty solid release just on the standard edition so but yeah there's just a bunch of these like there's just some awkward instrumentation i didn't like the malaise of heart songs i didn't like the the placement of the greatest man of ever that ever lived just the the instrument arrangement angel and the one kind of started off good with kind of some of that kind of sulky kind of music that could have been some good moody and emo music but then it perked up at the end and really changed over and it just was not quite as attractive and plus it's almost a seven minute song so there's just a number of these that like I, I i felt like cold dark world was trying to be what automatic was but just didn't pull it off as well like automatic was kind of like a stepping out song but i'll go ahead and talk about the songs i did enjoy so we'll get into that so you can talk about some of the bona fide moments that make you want to purchase it and such so i feel like minus the two singles i feel like everybody get dangerous is kind of one of the most vivid and like vital songs on this project just has a real nice kind of hazy energy about it but this is like another kind of stepping out kind of song basically a backyard party kind of song is has probably the most riveting riffs on this album i would have to say it's the most rock sounding song where troublemaker and pork and beans were kind of more karaoke and hard rock type songs in a club sense but everybody get dangerous is probably the, the best riffs on here the most metal kind of and hard rock kind of sounding thought i knew is kind of like sugar ray this one's kind of like a the real acoustic guitar licks and just kind of light kind of summery kind of um sugar ray type music and like um uh, smash mouth sounds really like something smash mouth and sugar ray would do it's just a real i really like this song it's probably one of the best songs on the album i really like the hook on there and just a bunch of things about it it's really felt like this this probably should have been a single instead of the greatest man that ever lived i think thought i knew would have done better just had a little bit more lighthearted energy kind of maybe a little bit moody but just kind of worked and kind of like he's apologizing in the whole song both verses he's kind of saying sorry most of the time but i just kind of like the concept of being able to say it just kind of has like a nice kind of this pop ready marketable and fashionable approach for a single and that type of stuff this is a real nice one and then automatic um automatic felt like another song that you listen to in the car after getting off work and getting ready to step out for the night this is definitely a nice evening song kind of getting ready to go out for the night and have a good time and this the the prelude to like a party and that type of stuff to something getting ready to pop off i definitely feel like this is the precursor to songs like troublemaker and pork and beans this is a pretty short-lived album but at least out of 10 songs i did like half the project just to be able to say that and i definitely feel like i was really impressed by pork and beans and troublemaker i just feel like these are kind of some edgy ones that despite the fact that uh weezer switched gears and didn't really do punk rock this time around and kind of power pop and 
or not power pop, they didn't really do power punk and that type of stuff and try to make commercial punk rock like they did last time. I still feel like they kind of had a little bit of edge that kind of gave them some new life to be able to showcase that they are songwriters and, and can deliver other hits without having to stick to one genre. So it's pretty good. Pork and Beans is pretty stylish. G great lead single. Troublemaker was good. So I'm going to give this album me liking 5 out of 10 songs. I'm going to give this album a 5.75 out of 10. I feel like I'm giving it to them just because I feel like these are charming songs and I feel like the delivery behind them, the fact that the, I feel like the songs that are good are good. And it, this is kind of, yeah, half the album isn't good, but it's just kind of more in their favor just because the execution of some of these. I mean, sometimes there are songs that you like, but you only like like a seven or an eight out of 10. But these are definitely some ones that have some real strong favor to them. So I give it a higher score where it's almost a six just because of the quality of these songs and they just have a lot of charm to them. I do like this album better than I like Make Believe. And that's saying something just because I don't remember what I scored Make Believe, but it was kind of underwhelming in a light sense, but it did have some quality hits in there. But I bought the album back in like October and I really don't listen to too many of the songs nowadays besides like Beverly Hills and Perfect Situation. I'm going to have to go back and listen to it again, but I do feel like the staying power six months later, I feel like this album probably has stronger staying power, but I'm just going to have to mess with Make Believe again and such. But yeah, 5.75 out of 10 the social score i'm going to go ahead and give like a five out of ten because it does have two good singles out of four so the social score it's i, I liked about half the singles on the project it, the social score is kind of middle of the road it has enough hits on here but it just needed more moments like everybody get dangerous and pork and beans the album needed more songs like everybody get dangerous and pork and beans and a little bit of automatic thrown in just those kind of moments i feel like they definitely had the jivey kind of energy when they wanted to but some of this new stuff that was kind of going in here they were trying a lot of experimentation on this project and not all of it worked I mean, that's kind of the concept where they could have stuck with what they did on Make Believe, but there were some new moments that worked, but there were some ones that didn't. And it kind of detracted from the social score because there are a lot of down-tempo songs, especially on the deluxe edition, that detract is because it just has a lot of kind of sluggish stupor about it that just does not deliver. That just kind of happens to be a thing. So it's five social... Uh, in terms of the future, like Weezer dropped four EPs last year that were based upon the seasons, so autumn, spring, summer, fall, but I may review those at some point, but for now I'm just going to kind of keep finding some of this vintage Weezer and that type of stuff to see what other hits they have and how they deliver upon it, but this is kind of some solid stuff here in a decent sense.